Deserts cover a vast area of our continents, and they usually form over regions with specific geographic characteristics. Do you know where deserts form and why? Here is a map that shows the rates of precipitation in millimeters per month over the year in the world. Precipitation is just rain, snow, sleet or hail that falls to the ground. Note that the dark blue colors represent more rain per month than areas shown as white or green. The rates of precipitation are used to define desertic regions. Deserts are locations where the potential rates of evaporation are much greater than the rates of precipitation. And where do deserts tend to form? That is, where are the major deserts located today in our planet? Here is the same map we've seen previously with the rates of precipitation and now we will look at the locations of the main deserts in the world. Do you know any relationship between these maps? If you observe the maps closely, you will note that the regions with lower rates of precipitation closely match the locations of the deserts. Because these are regions where we have high potential rates of evaporation, they are the regions where deserts may form. So what are the common geographic locations where deserts are formed? Well, deserts are usually formed between 15 and 30 degrees north and south of the equator, in the interior of continents, and in rain shadows of large mountain belts. Here I'm showing the locations of the major deserts of the planet you've just seen on map, now using Google Earth Pro. Note how large they are. They do cover a very large area of our continents. But why did these deserts form on those locations? Let's go over what is happening in each of these geographic locations we've listed before. And let's start with the latitudinal position where a lot of deserts form, between 15 and 30 degrees north and south of the equator. Major deserts form between 15 degrees and 30 degrees north and south of the equator because of the characteristics of the atmospheric circulation in our planet. Particularly, we are looking at how air is transported by the Hadley cell. The Hadley cell is a large-scale atmospheric convection cell that features air rising near the equator, flowing poleward at a height of 10 to 15 kilometers above the Earth's surface, descending in the subtropics, and then returning equatorward near the surface. This whole process starts out because the equator region receives a higher amount of sun radiation, so we have warmer air and lots of evaporation there. The whole region is usually very humid because warm air is capable of holding more moisture than cool air. So as we know, warmer air tends to rise, and it will do so until it gets to about 10 to 15 kilometers high. As the air rises, temperature decreases, so there will be a lot of precipitation events as the air masses rise and start their trip towards the north and south. Take a look at the map that shows the rates of precipitation in the world and note how there is much more rain near the equator. Following their path within the Hadley cell, air masses will continue flowing southward and northward, but as they do, they will get drier and drier because of the rain events, and also colder and colder since they are leaving the equator and going towards the poles. At around 30 degrees south and 30 degrees north, air masses tend to descend towards the planet's surface, so these regions will be dominated by dry air without much precipitation, and this creates the perfect environment for deserts to form. Take a look again at the map that shows the locations of the major deserts in our planet, and note how most of them are located around 30 degrees south and 30 degrees north.
Some deserts are also located in the interior of continents. In a very simplistic way, this is because they may be farther from the main sources of moist air. The main source of moist air that promotes rain is the ocean, far from the interior of continents. So there is usually more rain occurring near the coasts and once the air masses reach the interior of continents, they are already dry. But this effect includes a lot of other factors, and one of them is the rain shadow effect. This figure shows an example of how aridity is increased in the rain shadow of mountains. The moist, warm air comes from the ocean, and as it moves towards the continental interior, it encounters high mountains. Then the air masses are forced from a low elevation, where temperatures are higher, to a high elevation, where temperatures are colder, in the process we know as orographic lift. The air masses tend to rise in elevation in order to cross the mountains, and as they rise, they become cooler and able to hold less and less moist. So we have precipitation occurring on the side of the mountain above which air masses are rising. When the air masses are finally able to cross the high elevation terrain, they are already pretty dry. If they cross the high terrain towards a much lower terrain, temperatures tend to become much higher, which helps to prevent further precipitation. This is why we say these regions are rain shadows of mountains. Rain shadow regions are perfect settings for deserts to form. One example of rain shadow is the Tibetan Plateau, north of the Himalayas. Here is a video showing a Google Earth Pro visualization of the Himalayas and Tibetan Plateau, in Southeast Asia. The winds mainly come from the south, so when they encounter the Himalayas, the air masses tend to rise and a lot of precipitation tend to occur over there. Note how all this region is pretty green. Now, when the air masses cross the Himalayas towards the Tibetan Plateau, they are already very dry, so this region is much more arid. Note how the landscape, vegetation and colors change. Alright, so today we've talked about the locations where deserts form, we went over the specific geographic characteristics of these regions and why they create a perfect environment for desert formation.